and welcome to the 60 Minute to Webinar um, web, web, Website Migration Success Webinar. Um, we hope you're all keeping well, have ample supplies and important isolation snacks, and most importantly, are keeping very well and safe. Um, I'm Rachel, so I'll be the webinar jockey for today. Um, I'll be noting your questions and responding in the chat in the questions boxes. I'm the Digital Marketing Manager at Site Visibility. So we're a full service agency based in a lot of people's homes at the moment. Um, but normally we're based in Brighton and London and Tenerife, which is where Marcos is um, working from at the moment. Um, also behind the scenes, we've got our Marketing Manager, Sean Nichols, who's the mastermind of this whole show. Um, so thank you very much for joining uh, Marcus and I to talk all things website migrations. Um, there's a lot of reasons we believe this webinar is going to help everyone, not the least as it's a bit of human contact. Um, but if you're planning a migration or are trying to fix one that's gone wrong, we believe we've learned a lot over the years that will really help digital marketing folks out there. Um, so also as the co-founders of Brighton SEO, we really believe that sharing knowledge and helping the SEO community is um, what we're all about at SiteViz. Um, so we also have an accompanying migration white paper, which has lots of um, resources and um, kind of practical checklists and things to help you through your migration journey. Um, I think it will really supplement the content of this webinar really well. So I will share the link to that in our chat box shortly. Um, and Bruce, our commercial manager, has also opened up his diary to talk to people who are interested in working on their migrations with us at Site Visibility. Um, so we'll share the link around to um, his diary and you can book in um, a half an hour slot with him to talk about the challenges and the planning that you're undertaking at the moment. Um, so over the next 60 minutes, my esteemed colleague, um, and established Brighton SEO trainer, Marcos Alvarez Martin, will be imparting his experience and wisdom to ensure your site migration planning and execution are foolproof. He's worked on a ton of varied migrations as our senior SEO analyst for the last five to six years. Um, and he's worked on a lot of different brands, so lots of different types of migration as well. So in short, he's a living migration legend. Um, so what will we be covering in these precious 60 minutes together? So we'll be covering what a site migration is, uh, the different types of migration, where to start, go and end up in the planning stages, and what to do before, during and post site launch. So during the webinar, please feel free to um, log a question in the questions function in GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar. Um, and I'll be monitoring those. And after each uh, section, Marcus will pause um, and I'll be asking two or three of the questions that have been submitted about that section. If your question doesn't get answered throughout the webinar or in the Q&A at the end, please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, we'll also be producing some follow-up materials which will all be included in our follow-up to you. So if you miss anything, this webinar is being recorded and we'll send you through links to all of those resources that we talk about. Um, so don't worry if your question doesn't get answered during the webinar, we will definitely get to it. And we're very happy to have calls with anyone. We like talking to people at the moment and always, so um, fear not. So um, I'm sure you've all experienced the last two weeks. There may be a delay to the webinar audio, so please bear with us if there's any awkward silences. Um, and that's quite enough from me for now. So I will hand over to Marcos. Um, take it away, Marcos. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us on today. Uh, what better way to start a Wednesday than talking about site migrations, right? Uh, so let's start with uh, what is a site migration, the reason why we're here today. Uh, a site migration is one of the most uh, complicated and challenging uh, projects that an SEO can face, but it's also one of my favorites, to be honest, because it's it's uh, it has a beginning, it has an end, and uh, it it has to do with a new website, new flashy things to play with. So I personally love them. So what is a site migration? I will consider a site migration any large change in a website that impacts the way in which uh, that website looks or works, and the way the search engines perceive it. So something like updating content that's not a migration, 
but if you're changing the, the whole content on your own, your entire website, that could be considered a migration. And there are certain things that you will need to consider there. Uh, there are a lot of different types of migrations, and there are a lot of different things that you, you can be uh, changing and that you can be migrating. Um, and each of those types of migrations have a different risk. Uh, when I consider risk, I'm thinking about organic performance. This is an SEO-focused uh, webinar, and we're considering SEO. So when you have a website with a certain authority or with a certain strength, uh, when you migrate, you risk in those uh, that organic traffic and those rankings that you have fight to, to gain. And we need to be aware of those risks when we're migrating. Um, I have here different types of, of changes that you can make on your website. And in most migrations, I've been uh, part, I can see uh, that uh, different of, uh, of these changes are happening at the same time. So we have, for example, a platform change where you are moving from uh, Magento to Shopify or from WordPress to a different type of platform. In that case, I consider the risk is medium because it usually comes with changes in URLs, changes in design as well, and it's something to be aware of. Uh, changes in servers, uh, it's usually a low risk because the website itself doesn't change unless you are changing from uh, to a server that is very far away from your audience. If you're changing to a, a server that is in Australia, for example, you can see uh, a big impact. But in general, uh, server changes don't come with a lot of risk. Then we have design changes, which usually uh, mess with the images that you have on your website, with the headings that you have on the website, and sometimes even with the content. And that's why I consider those uh, changes a high risk, and that's something that we need to be aware of. Content changes could be risky. It depends on, on, depends on the length of the, of the content changes that you're making and could be things like including more images or removing images or including videos, removing videos. Uh, there's a medium risk in there. Uh, then we have the uh, URL changes, which is a high risk as well, because uh, Google and search engines in general, when they're ranking pages, they're ranking URLs. If a certain URL is doing very well, and you change it to another one, to Google, that's a new URL. And that's a high risk that comes with that because uh, Google won't consider that uh, new URL uh, as good as the old one, unless you do certain things that I will discuss uh, during this webinar. And finally, we have the domain changes, which are the higher risk uh, because uh, as, just like Google is considering uh, different URLs uh, when ranking them, it also considers the, the domain, and each domain has certain strength, certain authority that search engines give to that domain. And you work very hard to work for your brand and for your uh, and to gain that uh, domain strength. If you're changing that domain, and that could be a completely new domain, or could be things like moving from .co.uk to .com, that comes with a lot of risk, and that uh, it includes all the risk that the URL change has but even more risk associated with brand awareness and uh, the strength and the, the experience that that domain has, if that, makes, if that makes sense. And finally, I have here a different type of migration, which uh, is the acquisitions or majors, uh, which happens when a, a certain brand or certain business acquires another, uh, another business. Uh, in that case, it can, two things can happen. First is that the, the business that is acquiring the other one simply absorbs it. And that means that there's not a lot of risk because the website is not changing. You just need to redirect the acquired uh, domain to the new one. Or another thing that can happen is that a new website can appear and the two websites are merged into one. And in that case, it will come with more risks. So that's something that needs to be addressed at the beginning of the, of the planning process. Uh, before I start uh, discussing how we plan for a migration, uh, I would like to ask if there's any question uh, so, Rachel, any question about what a um, web migration is or uh, the different types of migration and the different risks associated to each type of migration? Hi, Marcos. Uh, no, no questions about what migration actually is at the moment. So. Okay. Oh, Remember, that, yeah, I will. Remember that if you have any questions, you can uh, look it into the chat box. Okay, so let's plan for a migration. Uh, what is the process when you're going to face uh, when planning for a migration? 
Well, uh, the first stage is obviously the planning. Uh, we need to consider what's going to happen. Then we need to decide what are the pre-migration activities we're going to undertake. That is before launch. Then we have the migration on launch day, what we're going to do. The post-migration checks, what's going to happen after we have migrated. Do we, do we need to do anything at all? Or we just uh, keep reviewing what we have done. And finally, depending on the on what we have done, we'll see success, hopefully. Um, uh, let's start with the planning. The first thing we need to do is consider the impact for all digital marketing er areas. We need to consider uh, why we're changing uh, the website. Um, who's going to impact? Uh, I have SEO here, but of course it's going to impact as well PPC because some landing pages may change. It's going to impact social media, the plan for social media, and uh, maybe we want to uh, talk about our new website when it launches. So uh, the social media guys needs to be, need to aware, be aware of, of these things as well. In terms of measurement and analytics, we need to be aware of uh, uh, different things like uh, conversion rate that could change uh, depending on the changes that we make. Uh, different goals that we can uh, set up in Google Analytics may change if the landing pages change. Um, and we also need to be uh, annotating those changes that we're making on the website. Uh, and in general, all the marketing areas, and not just digital marketing, but also uh, off-site uh, uh, or traditional marketing, need to be aware of the changes that we're making and why we're making them. Then we need to create the specs for the new website. Uh, once we have decided what we're going to change, uh, we need to decide the technical requirements. If we want to make this change to improve rankings, then we need to consider things like content, page speed, things like that. Or if we want to improve conversions, we need to uh, think about user experience or, or conversion rate optimization. And those are things that uh, need to be addressed at this stage. I always recommend having an SEO involved since the beginning, since the initial conversations, because from my experience, uh, the best uh, migrations I uh, uh, have seen are the ones where SEOs have been involved since the beginning with the developers identifying risks and opportunities. Uh, and I have seen some really bad stories of uh, clients that come to us because they haven't considered SEO. Uh, and they said, oh, we have migrated uh, and the, the traffic has gone really bad. We have lost all organic traffic, all organic visibility, and we're losing revenue because of this. Or even clients that come to me and say, oh, well, we have created this new website and we want to migrate it, can you help us? Uh, and then I start looking at the website that has already been created and it's ready to launch. And I said, it has a lot of issues, that it has a lot of problems. If you launch it as it is, you're going to lose visibility. And then the client will get mad at me because I'm delaying the launch and because I'm telling them how bad the website looks. If, if you had involved an SEO since the beginning, that wouldn't have happened. Um, we also need to be aware of team communication. As I was saying, uh, the best uh, migrations I have seen are the ones where SEO and developers work together since the beginning. So we need to consider all stakeholders that are going to be part of, the, of uh, this migration project. Uh, we need to agree the plan together and we need to set communication channels and have regular updates. Uh, if those uh, regular updates could be uh, in form of emails or Slack channels or any form of, of communication or regular uh, meetings or calls to make sure that everyone is on the same page uh, when planning for the migration and when working for the migration. We also need to, to decide when we're going to migrate and we need to consider different things here. The main thing I will do is looking at uh, seasonal trends in Google Analytics the uh, times of low demand where there's not that much traffic coming to your website or not as much revenue because those are uh, ideally the best times to migrate because you know that you're going to minimize the impact in case something goes wrong but hopefully it won't. Uh, consider looking at Google Trends as well to identify those areas or those times of low demand and in case you have uh, uh, different international stores or international websites and you know that uh, you Imagine that you have, for example, uh, a website for UK, a website for US, and a website for Australia. And you know that the Australian website, uh, it's not really bringing a lot of traffic, it's not your main uh, priority, business priority. You may want to migrate that one first, to just as a proof of concept and to make sure that everything goes according to plan. And once that's uh, 
that's migrated, then you can go to the main market and, and migrate uh, those websites as well. Another thing that you need to consider at this stage is if something goes wrong with the SEO and you lose those rankings, you want to have a, a different source of traffic. So maybe when you are timing the migration, you want to increase the budget for PPC or for other uh, sources of traffic to make sure that uh, those other channels make it up for the potential uh, drop that could happen from organic traffic. Uh, and that's it from the for the planning uh, stage. Um, before we jump into the, the pre-migration stage, uh, I would like to ask Rachel if she has any question about planning for migration. Hi, um, me again. Um, so I've got a question about when to get um, uh, SEO involved in the planning stages of a web migration and when you get developers involved um yeah what stages do you get all of those different teams involved in in the migration so ideally when someone makes a decision of migrate a website the first thing they will do is contact the developers and tell them okay we want to do this um these are the things that we want to do and the reasons why we want to do it and then the developers will go away and uh, decide all of the activities and all of the things they need to create maybe it's improving the existing website or maybe it's creating a new website uh, once the developers come back um, and explain all the things that they want to do, the SEO should be there as well. And the SEO should be bringing the ideas. And even before that, uh, you can also contact a, an SEO and get a list of requirements for a new website. Uh, things like having a robots.txt, having an XML sitemap, uh, making sure that all the internal links are working, uh, things like that. Uh, so the developers will uh, will consider those elements when they are creating the, these uh, specs for the new website. So ideally from the beginning, from the very beginning. Cool. Um, and I've got a question here from Nick. If you change from one JavaScript format to another, is that considered a platform migration? From one JavaScript to another? Um, well, as usually we say, the CEOs, it depends. It depends on how the changes are uh, made. It could be considered a, a platform change. Uh, with JavaScript, the main thing that you need to uh, remember is that if, if uh, your, your website doesn't work without having JavaScript enabled, <clears throat> it could mean that uh, search changes won't be able to see the website. So you will need to look at how the JavaScript is going to work before and after, uh, because you are potentially facing uh, something very risky if you are using a lot of uh, javascript on the new website so really it depends on the types of what of javascript that you that you're making of javascript changes you're making uh, but potentially it, it could be a risky migration and it's something you will need to look into great thank you um and one more for now in your experience how many migrations take place over a weekend that's a question from jonathan <laughs> well I have seen some developers that prefer to do their migrations on a Monday uh, or a Tuesday, which is the beginning of the week and it's pretty fresh. Uh, some people think that it's the best idea is to endure the, the weekend because maybe there's not as much traffic uh, uh, going to the website on a weekend. I usually don't recommend doing it on a Friday or a weekend just because uh, people is not working. But if you mobilize all, the, all uh, your developers and your SEOs and your marketing team, because it's something that uh, other teams need to be involved with, uh, then you could do it on a, during a weekend. But I always recommend doing it at the beginning of the week when everyone is working and when the website is working. Maybe doing it very early in the morning. I have been on migrations where uh, we have migrated at 7 in the morning. So we have to be in the offices at 6 in the morning to start planning for everything. Uh, so yeah, don't don't migrate on weekends. Don't do it. <laughs> Should be chilling out on weekends. Um, yeah. One more question quickly: Should you migrate your low priority pages before high priority pages? That's a question from Phil. Well, uh, that depends on the type of migration you are making. Uh, if you are changing the design of the website, it's probably easier to do it all at once. Uh, I understand that some people, if it's a change like. Uh, changing content and 
uh, changes on design on different types of pages, uh, if you have the capability, go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. um, if it's things like changing the URL structure of the website uh, and changing the domain, obviously you cannot just migrate half of the website. Uh, that's something I wouldn't recommend. So it depends on the change you are making. If it's uh, minor changes that and you have the technical capability to do it, go ahead um, and do it in, in different stages. Great. Um, there are a few more questions, but um, we'll leave them to the end just to make sure that we cover everything in the hour. Um, so thanks very much. And um, yeah, over to you, Marcos. Talk to you later. OK, so we're now on the pre-migration stage. And the first thing, first activity that we're going to do on the pre-migration stage, and the pre-migration stage is all the activities that we do prior to the launch of the, of the new website. The first thing we want to do is create a staging site or a pre-production site or a testing site. Basically, this is going to be a, a testing environment where we're going to be creating our new website. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to have our live website that is still functioning as normal. And you still have users coming to your website and converting. And then you will have your staging website, which is where you are making all the tests and all the changes. Um, you want that staging site to be accessible only for the people working on that staging environment. You don't want your users, you don't want uh, other uh, search engines or robots accessing that staging website because it's not finished. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to drink some water. So how do you hide that website to make sure that no one access? The easiest way to do it is by uh, requiring an authentication to access that website. That is either requiring a, a password or blacklisting all IPs, and your IP needs to be whitelisted to access that state inside. Uh, that will prevent robots and users to access the website, uh, the state in website. <clears throat> uh, or sometimes you have the, that works on a, on a separate subdomain, and you know that uh, users cannot access uh, that state in the website. And in those cases, you can implement the noindex tag to make sure that robots won't index that website in case they found it. Uh, another option is to use the robots.txt on that staging website to tell robots not to crawl and not to uh, index that website. Actually, just not to crawl. You cannot noindex on the robots.txt anymore. Uh, what I wouldn't recommend is doing the is implementing the noindex tag and the blocking the robots.txt at the same time. You need to choose one or the other, because if you do the two of them at the same time, it could confuse robots, and you can end up with, with robots uh, crawling and indexing your staging website, and you don't want that. Uh, what I personally recommend is using the authentication process, either require a password to access that staging website, or require whitelisting IPs. <clears throat> The next step is uh, uh, creating the URL map or the redirect map. Uh, what is a URL map? It's a document that specifies the new location of all the old URLs that you have. And of course, you only need to do that if you are changing the URLs. If you are not changing URLs, you don't need to worry about the URL mapping. Uh, you need to consider all the live URLs that you have on the old website and pair them to the URLs that are on the new website. This is one of the lengthiest elements of a migration and one of the, the reasons that it causes so many headaches because you need to find all of the old URLs and pair them to the new ones. So it's really, really tricky, but I love it. Uh, I love puzzles, I love uh, jigsaw. So to me, this is like a game. I'm a geek, what can I say? Um, so why do we need this URL map? <clears throat> we need it mainly for two reasons. There are more reasons that could be included in, in one of these two. But the main one is to keep the authority from the old pages. Uh, you have worked very hard on your website to gain those, those rankings, to gain organic traffic, and to reach certain level of authority via uh, links from external website, via great content, page speed, all of that. You want to keep those rankings. So if you're changing the URLs, all that strength that you have put on these uh, URLs is going to be lost. So you want to redirect those old URLs to the new ones 
to make sure that you're keeping that thread. And uh, the other reason is to redirect the users to the new website. If they have bookmarked the, uh, those URLs, or if they have uh, shared the certain links in so the social media, or they're finding links to the old website, you want the users to end up on the new page. So you want to redirect them to the new uh, website. And those are the main reasons why we want to go through the entire URL mapping process. Now, how do we do it? Uh, <coughs> uh, the main thing that you need to do is uh, identify all of the old URLs that you have on the website. And you can do that via uh, crawling your website. You can use Screaming Frog or any other uh, crawling tool I have used, deep crawl, on crawl, different tools out there crawl your website and find all of the pages that you have there. And you can also identify all the pages that are receiving links using tools like Majestic SEO or Moz or Ahrefs to identify any page that you have on the website and that is receiving links from external sources because those are valuable pages. Uh, you need also to identify all the pages that have been indexed by Google and that's something you can do on Google Search Console identify pages that are receiving traffic at the moment because of course you want to redirect that traffic to the new page so you can use google Anal analytics for that and finally any page that have been shared in social media because you want to make sure that any user that have been uh, finding those pages in social media is uh, is landing on the new on the new site so you find all of these pages and you create a pool of all the all the urls that you have on the website once you have that, um, you need to map them with the uh, new URLs. You should also have a list of all the new URLs you are creating on the on the new website. So you will <clears throat> you will page you will uh, pair one page to another, or different pages. If you are taking content from this page and this page and taking it to another, you can also redirect two pages to one new URL if that makes sense. And finally. I think uh, the last activity is benchmark. Gather a picture of uh, uh, our, your current uh, website. Take a look at page speed, uh, the index pages, uh, traffic from Google Analytics, the conversion, the revenue, engagement metrics like uh, 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 time on, on, on the website or bounce rate, things like that, and any other relevant metric that is important to you because you want to compare how the old website is doing with how the new website is going to do once it's live. Finally, now this is the last one. And we have the audit. Uh, at this stage, we have created a staging site. Sorry, just a second. I'm back. Uh, you have created your staging site. And it's, it's finished, it's ready to launch, and now what you need to do is audit it. Make sure that it follows SEO best practice uh, before going live. You don't want a site that hasn't been audited and, uh, live, not knowing if it's going to keep the strength that you have on the old website or not. <clears throat> so what are the things that you need to review? When I do a, a technical SEO audit, I review all of these elements, but audits can be tailored for each uh, for different websites based on your needs and the nature of your business things i usually have a look at include internal errors meta titles heading tags the structure of the urls you will need to consider structure data you will need to consider international seo if you have if you have presence in in different countries you will need to consider local seo if you have physical locations uh, and in general, just reviewing the entire website and making sure that it follows best practice. <laughs> and ideally, you should plan in advance those requirements for your new website, because what you don't want to do is reach this stage, audit your website, and find a lot of errors. It's a new website, it, it cannot have errors. It needs to be uh, perfect. So if you had planned in advance uh, what you want your website to do, then you shouldn't find any error. And that will save you a lot of time because if you reach this date and find a lot of issues because the, the site is ready to launch, what that will do is delay in that launch. <clears throat> and you don't want that to happen. 
you want, uh, because you have already choose when you want to migrate. If you reach this stage and you need to go back to development to fix all those errors, that's going to mess with your planning. So plan in advance. Uh, before we move on to what's going to happen on the migration day, I want to ask Rachel if she has any other question for me. Hi, me again. Uh, cool. So I have got a couple of questions. I've got a question from Alex here. So he says, hi, uh, just have a question in relation to URL mapping. Would you recommend running a backlink audit to identify any legacy URLs on your site that may have been missed? Yeah, if we go back to the, to the redirect mapping and the planning, one of the elements I uh, have here is pages receiving links. That's when you do your uh, backlink audit to identify pages that are receiving links and uh, high priority uh, links. Those are uh, authority websites that are linked to your site. And you can go through the process of changing those links and that's something I will uh, discuss on the uh, post-migration activities. But yeah, that's something I will encourage you to do. Fab. Um, a couple of people are asking if this is being recorded. It is, and we will be sending um, the link to the recording in the follow-up. So don't freak out if you've uh, missed anything or um, anything like that, because we'll be going over it, uh, sending it out again. So another question. So Marcos, what are soft 404 errors? Soft 404s. Uh, a soft 404 <clears throat> is a page that, you know what, uh, if you don't know what a 404 error is, that's a status code uh, that appears when a, when a page is not found, uh, basically when a page doesn't exist. Uh, a soft 404 is a page that is not displaying a 404, uh, but it's looking like a 404, if that makes sense. Uh, a 404, when you land in a not found page or a 404, it should tell you, sorry, this page cannot be found, this is a 404 error, continue visiting our website, blah, 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 blah. Uh, a soft 404 is a page that is displaying that uh, that screen. It's showing you that it's a 404, but actually the status code that the page is is providing, it's 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 a 200, which means that it's okay. So when you're crawling your 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 website, it will come up as a page that is actually okay, that it's 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 live and it's working as normal, but it's actually not. So it's a 404 in disguise. <laughs> Great. Cool. Um, and Laura asks, should redirects be performed before the new site is live? Um, so I will test the redirects on the staging site. If you have a different subdomain for your staging site, then you can test them before going live. And I, that's something I, re I recommend doing. And then on the migration date, the first thing you're going to do is uh, the redirects. <clears throat> And that's something we're going to discuss now. We can we can jump into that now, unless you have any other questions, Rachel. Um, uh, there are some other questions, but I'll save them for the next uh, little question and section. Okay. Oh. So, okay, we have reached the migration day. Um, the first thing that happened, the new website goes live, and we implement the redirects. So that's the first thing that you need to do when your new page or when your new website is live those redirects that you have mapped before and that you have test in the staging site, you need to implement them and make sure that the, all the old URLs are going to the new website. Then the initial test right after the you have checked that those redirects are in place, uh, making sure that your uh, new website is crawlable, use Screaming Frog or your crawling tool of reference to start testing and making sure that those internal links are working and that search engines can crawl your entire website. Uh, you also need to make sure that it's indexable. If you have used a, a no index tag when you were on the staging site, or if you were disallowing the entire website with a robot.txt, you want to make sure that that no index tag or that disallow line on the robot.txt is removed. Uh, it sounds obvious, but I have uh, seen cases where clients have come to me saying, oh, I have migrated and I have lost all visibility, what happened? And I say, well, what happened is that you leave the no index tag on. So Google saw the no index tag and say, okay, we cannot index this page and they lose all visibility. It's something very simple and very easy to miss. 
So it's one of the first things you need to check. <clears throat> you also need to make sure that RoboStix is in place. If you have the disallow line, you need to make sure that it's not there anymore. Uh, and if you are uh, docking certain areas of the website, you need to make sure that the RoboStix is working as planned and you can test it in, in Google Search Console. <clears throat> Uh, the next thing is uh, making sure that the, your XML sitemap is in place. If you have changed all the, uh, the URLs, Google needs to identify those URLs. <clears throat> By creating an XML sitemap and submitting it into Google Search Console and being webmaster tools, you're making sure that uh, search engines are processing those new URLs and it will speed up your reindexation. When the, once those initial tests are done, you want to do your first crawl and do uh, either a technical SEO review or a technical SEO audit. If you have already done a technical SEO audit on the planning stage, uh, then uh, and everything has gone according to plan, then you really don't need to do another audit at this stage unless uh, you're worried about the performance of your website. Just doing a technical SEO review Crawling your website, making sure that uh, you don't have errors there, making sure that your title tags, meta descriptions, headings are in there, just the, your usual SEO checks, uh, then that's fine. Uh, you also need to ensure that uh, measurement is in place. Uh, this is an SEO focused webinar, but I also want to, to stress how important it is to have Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager. Uh, tracking code in place for all of the pages of your website. Uh, sometimes after a migration, people will see a drop in visits, but that's not actually a drop. It's just that you don't have the, the correct tagging in place. Um, if, you, if you are not tracking who's coming to your website, it would look like you have a drop. So make sure that you, you have uh, Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager tags in place and make sure that uh, Google Search Console and Bing One Master Tools are also working. If you're changing the domain, remember that you need to create a new account for uh, uh, for Google Search Console and for, and for Bing Webmaster Tools. <clears throat> uh, the next thing is to uh, make sure that uh, your new pages are being indexed as quick as possible. I have already said that the, the sitemap is the main thing that you need to be aware of and you need to be worried about. Uh, when you want to re-index all of your new pages. But there are other things that you can do. Um, what I have here first, of, obviously, is the XML sitemap. Uh, then um, you can also request the indexation of key URLs in Google Search Console. <clears throat> so if you go to uh, Google Search Console and, and add a certain uh, <clears throat> URL on the search bar, you can ask for that URL to be indexed immediately. It won't be immediately, Google will tell you that uh, it will look at that URL and it will be, it will index it as soon as possible, <clears throat> but that's something that you want to do with your key URLs. You can't do it with all of them because Google will get suspicious and will say, no, we're not going to do it anymore. So just choose your homepage and your main traffic driven page and make sure that they're indexed uh, the same day as you launch. Change external links. That's something uh, that somebody mentioned in the chat. Uh, if you have links from uh, different websites, uh, what we call backlinks, you can uh, do an outreach project and try to change those links to point to the new uh, location of your content. Uh, that would be useful if you're changing domain or if you're changing URLs. And that's something that you can do to make sure that your new pages are receiving that uh, that link strength directly instead of going through the redirect, which is something that you still have in place, uh, but you want to make sure that the, that link strength is coming directly. And finally, social media, you can shout about your new and flashy website and uh, start sharing new pages to make sure that uh, search engines are looking at those pages or your users are finding those pages. Social media links are not a ranking factor, famously, <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that uh, they're not aware of the, of the sharing of those links that we are sharing in social media. <clears throat> they can find those links and they can identify new pages. And if you share things in social media, of course, people will uh, 
retweet it or reshare it or talk about it in, in different websites and you can still get mentions or links pointed to your new website. Um, those are all the things that you need to do on your uh, migration day. And now before we jump at the post-migration activities and what you do after you have migrated, Rachel, another round of questions from you? Yep, we've got a few questions. Um, there's lots of questions actually, so I'm sure I'll, I'll pick out a few for this section. So um, Ulrika is asking, how do I test a staging site in JavaScript with no index in place? Uh, she wants to check what is rendered in the browser and what Google can see. Can you repeat the question, please? There's a lot of things in there. <laughs> so the first part is, how do I test a staging site in JavaScript with no index in place? She wants to check what's rendered in the browser and what Google and what Go and what Google can see. Okay, so lots of different things in there. Uh, certain crawlers can crawl uh, staging sites that have JavaScript rendering in place, even if there is no index tag. You can do that, for example, in Screaming Frog. Uh, you will need to go to, into some of the settings that uh, Screaming Frog has and make sure that uh, JavaScript rendering is in place, and then uh, start crawling the, that staging site, and you will start receiving uh, information about the website and about how it's looking. Uh, really, if there's a no index tag, you cannot test how Google is going to uh, is going to render those pages. What I have seen some people do, and that's something that comes with certain risk, but that's something that, that if you really want to do, how, if you really want to see how Google is uh, rendering the website, it's something you can do, is remove the no index tag uh, in certain pages, just, just a couple. Um, then make sure that Google is finding those pages and indexing those pages. Well, Google doesn't really need to index it, just scrolling it and finding them. And then in Google Search Console, uh, you can create a, a particular view for that uh, for that staging site, and you can test those URLs in Google Search Console, and there you can see how Google is rendering those pages. So that's one thing that you can do. Cool. Um, and I've got a question here from Jack. What is the maximum amount of pages you would suggest to request to be indexed through Search Console? Um, if it was me, I wouldn't do more than five. I don't think that Google has given any number, and if they have it, it uh, I cannot remember at the moment. Uh, but it has to be a low number. You, uh, in the past, Google will tell you how many uh, pages you can request for indexing, but now uh, it's not showing that limit anymore. <clears throat> so I will just choose the home page, um, a couple of key pages, not more than five, unfortunately. Cool, great. Um, and I've got a question here from Nick. How long do you recommend keeping the old domain and keeping the redirects live? Google says at least one year, but that seems like a long time. Um, Google is correct. I will even leave it uh, longer. <laughs> they, it, it doesn't harm to have them uh, live and redirecting to the to the, to the other one. Um, Google says, yeah, minimum of one year, uh, unless uh, having those uh, pages up and that old website up and redirecting to the new one is causing a lot of uh, uh, cost to the business then I will keep them for as long as, as possible. Cool. Um, and a question here for just one more from Christina. Uh, do you recommend submitting both side maps, old, site maps, old and new in Google Search Console so Google understands the old and new site structure? Uh, yeah, that's something that people can do. Uh, well, ideally, your old site map should already be on Google Search Console. So it's not something that you need to submit again, because if you already have it there, uh, Google will uh, regularly uh, go back to it and crawl the pages in there. Um, what I have seen people do, and this is something I recommend as well, is if you have a different view for the different website, just leave the, the old sitemap there, 
because then Google can go to those pages, uh, crawl them, and then they will see that redirect to the new website. And if you have a new view with a new uh, XML sitemap, those two things will help Google understand then how the website have moved uh, location. Cool. Okay, um, there are a couple of questions as well about um, the auditing process um, as part of migration. Uh, there's actually quite a few questions. So um, what we'll do, Marcos, is if you're happy with this, we'll um, go and collate all of those um, questions and include them either in our follow up or in another resource um, in, a, in a couple of weeks, potentially. Yeah. So we'll discuss that. And but um, don't worry, any of your auditing questions we can um, also have a quick call with you as well, so don't worry. Um, but that's all for now. I've, I've noted a few other questions from people, so um, we'll save those till the end. Yeah, let's finish migrating. Let's do it. So now you have migrated, what happens now? Uh, you cannot just rest, uh, think that everything is done. Uh, you need to go back and see what's been happening with your new, new website, how it's performing. So do you remember the benchmark that you did at the beginning? Looking at page speed, Google Analytics, and other metrics that were of interest to you? Now it's time to start collecting data for the new website and start comparing. Am I getting more traffic? Uh, are my traffic converting better? What's my page speed of the new website compared to the old one? And what other metrics are of interest to me and how they are performing now versus the old website? And that will help you understand how the website is performing and where you need to improve current performance. If you see that traffic is coming, is, uh, coming uh, at, just like as usual, you haven't been impacted uh, by the migration, but the, the, the traffic that is coming is not, is not converting as well, then maybe you have a user experience or a conversion rate uh, problem on the website and you need to work on the, on the user journey and on the design of the website. If you see that the new website is very slow, then you need to consider, am I using too much CSS files, JavaScript files? Uh, am I using a lot of images and videos? Are they correctly optimized? Is there something that I can do? So that will help you develop the, the new website. Here's a reminder of uh, the things that uh, we were looking at at the beginning. Uh, page speed, indexation, traffic, engagement metrics, and any other, any other relevant metric to you. Uh, then you will need to start doing regular checks. I have mentioned here Google Search Console and Bing Web Master Tools because those are the free tools that the main search engines offer. You can also use uh, third-party uh, tools, things like SEMrush, Moz, Ahrefs, different uh, tools out there that will tell you about your your website performance and your auditing. Uh, some people were asking about audit questions, were asking audit questions, and there are a lot of tools out there that will help you with your auditing process if you don't have an SEO agency or an SEO person in-house to help you with that. Uh, monitor things like the, the errors, the page speed, the structured data, because that's information that you can get from Search Console, making sure that the structured data is still working when you move from the old website to the new one. And in general, keep an eye on the metrics to see how your website is doing. Update your business information, especially if you have migrated to a new domain, or if you have changed URLs, uh, particularly for local SEO, which is one of my favorite uh, parts of SEO, I love migrations and I love local SEO. Uh, in local SEO, you will have a lot of different listings out there in Google My Business, Bing, uh, Bing uh, Places. You can have review sites or different tools linking to your location pages and to your stores. Uh, if that, those URLs have changed, then you will need to go uh, into these tools and change in the, the URLs to make sure that they are pointing to the new uh, destination pages. And finally, once you have the, that information, hopefully you will see that everything is going as planned and that your migration have gone as smooth as possible. Um, so hopefully this was of interest to you all and this was useful. And if you have any other questions, it, this is your last chance to be asking those in the chat.
uh, while we completed the, the presentation. Remember uh, to download uh, our accompanying SEO website migration checklist. It's something that we have on the website and we will be sharing the link uh, uh, when we share the rest of the resources. And that includes all of the different activities I have mentioned here uh, to make sure that your website uh, migration goes as perfect as possible. And if you need any further help with your web migration, uh, remember that you can email me or you can contact uh, Bruce Bignell, our uh, commercial manager, to have a 30 minute call with one of our specialists. Could be me, could be Rachel, could be somebody else, uh, to make sure that uh, you have everything you need to, uh, to have a perfect migration. Rachel, uh, back to you with those questions. Hi, thanks Marcos, that was awesome. So we've got quite a few questions, which is great. Um, it's uh, really good. So the challenge is on for you there, Marcos. Um, so Fernando has two questions. In your experience, what percentage of organic traffic do you usually lose when you migrate? So that's question one. Um, and regarding Regarding communication with the client, do you use any dashboards to track the progress um, and communicate with the client? If so, what are the key metrics for you during the whole process? So I'll repeat the first one. In your experience, what percentage of organic traffic do you usually, usually lose when you migrate? And I guess that that is a classic SEO answer. It depends. <laughs> it depends, obviously, yeah. <laughs> So I have seen uh, migration that have gone very smooth and have seen an uplift in traffic right after the migration. I've seen migrations that have seen uh, a plane train, nothing really has happened. And then I have seen a lot of horror stories where traffic has gone down. And the percentage that it goes down, it depends on uh, how well your migration is. I guess that the question is more about uh, right after the migration where you usually see some fluctuation and how, what's the percentage that you will see before seeing that recovery. Uh, again, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that fluctuation and that drop right after the migration doesn't need to happen. Uh, it will happen if, if, if you don't pay attention to all of the SEO recommendations, but you have a redirect map in place. And if you have audited your new website and your new website is actually better than the old one, you won't see a drop right after the, the the migration so some people say that you will always get dropped right after that migration but that doesn't need to be the case cool and what was the second question second, second part part b was um regarding communication okay. with clients yes. so do you use any dashboards to track the process and communicate with the client um and if so what are the key metrics for you during the whole process so during the process of the migration how do you communicate with the client um are there any key metrics that you keep an eye on um and that kind of question there are a lot of things out there to uh, track progress you can use asana i have used as well uh, trello uh, or simply having a something as simple as a spreadsheet with all the different activities and what's going to happen week after week and um, that's something that uh, uh, that I have used with with certain clients. In terms of key metrics, I'm not too sure if if he means uh, during the process or as a to prove the success of the migration. Um, to prove the success, we it, 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 it depends on the client. Some people are more uh, interested in organic traffic. Some people is more concerned about the the conversions. So if you are not selling online, it could be any other different metric that they have set up, or it could be uh, engagement metrics. Mm. And during the process, uh, we don't really have like, key metrics to look at while we are, we are going through the migration process. We may have some metrics in place. We know that we need to improve uh, conversions or organic traffic. And when we're going through the process, that's something that we keep in mind, but really that doesn't changes the, the process. Great. Uh, in classic home working, I've just uh, I can just hear some people knocking on the on the on the wall doing some home improvements, which is very helpful. Um, so Katerina asks, 
how long should I wait for the website traffic to settle before comparing with benchmarks? Uh, what do you think, Rachel? <laughs> it depends. Again. It de <laughs> <laughs> um, in case you see that fluctuation I was talking about, uh, uh, in general, the traffic should go something like this. You will see a drop and then you will see improvement. Once you start seeing that improvement, is when you need to start a benchmarking. It also depends on the, on the metric. Page speed, for example, you can start testing right after you have migrated. It's something that you, you can already uh, measure. In terms of index and indexation, uh, you need to keep an eye on, uh, on the numbers and see when they are going back to normal. If they're not going back to normal, then that's an issue there. And unfortunately, that is the time where you need to make benchmark and realize that the migration ha hasn't gone as good as you planned. More questions, please. More questions. Um, so Andy asks, is there an easy way to compare a new domain against an old one in Search Console and Analytics if URLs have changed and you're using new properties? Uh, you cannot uh, compare directly properties in Google Search Console. Um, so what you will need to do is extracting that information and comparing it, in, comparing it separately using Excel or, or something like that. Um, so I guess that no, there's no easy way to, <laughs> to compare in properties uh, unless there's any uh, tool out there that allows you to do it. Uh, and if there is, I would be happy to, to learn about it. Great. Um, and Phil asks, should you delete the sitemap and robots.txt file uh, for the old site? Um, if, if you are migrating to the same domain, then that robots.txt from the old site uh, sadly will need to go away. Same with the sitemap. Um, if you are moving to a different, uh, a different domain, uh, then that is something uh, that you can keep in there, uh, because Google probably will remember the old URLs and will go back to them after a certain time to find those URLs and see how they're doing. And that is the opportunity to redirect uh, search engines to the new uh, website. So that's something you can keep if you're moving from one domain to another. Cool. Um, so Sue has asked, we have uh, what looks like thousands or tens of thousands of internal links which need to be changed to the new URLs rather than 301s. Do you have any advice to ease this process? Sorry, come again. Uh, so they have, Sue has uh, uh, thousands of internal links which need to be changed to the new URLs rather than the, the old ones. Do you have any advice to ease this process or is there any um, tools or anything that you would use for that kind of process? Okay, it depends on the platform you're using. And sometimes if you're using WordPress, I think there's a, a, a plugin or an option to change all internal links. You will need to speak with your developers to see if there's any opportunity or if there's any option to change those links. Uh, if if the developers kind of offer you any solution, then you unfortunately will need to go and change them manually. That's why it's important to first making sure that those redirects are in place. So in the meantime, at least the the users are finding the new location of those pages. But then you will need to go and change them manually. Okay. Um, so I guess um, this is a similar question to earlier, but Christina asks, what do you consider a success? What do you consider successful migration? She's commented a drop of less than 40% in organic traffic. Would that be would that be a success? What what would you consider a success, Marcos? Successful migration. Uh, any drop that hasn't recovered after a migration, I don't think it's a success. Um, keeping the same uh, amount of traffic, the same trend, if it goes like this, and then you migrate and it goes the same, that's a successful migration. Uh, because you don't really need to see an improvement in rankings or in traffic after migrating, if that was not your objective. 
but then of course, I guess it depends on, on what you're looking for. If you want to uh, improve the, the conversion of your website and you see a drop in organic traffic, but actually conversions are, are going better for you, that is a successful, successful migration. If you are only focusing in, in, in organic traffic and you don't want organic traffic to drop, unfortunately, uh, a drop that hasn't recovered in in certain amount of time, it could be a few weeks or it could be a month, uh, then it's uh, an unsuccessful migration, sadly. Mm. And um, talking about uh, unsuccessful migrations or migrations that have gone wrong, um, or haven't recovered potentially any kind of traffic what would you uh, this is my question by the way Marcus how would uh, you approach um, a uh, business coming to you who who've gone through a, a bit of a disastrous migration what would be the uh, steps that you would take yeah that's something uh, that have happened in the past we have new clients that said okay we migrated a few months ago and we saw a disaster right after that our traffic uh, fully dropped and we're not recovering and we don't know what happened so the way i will uh treat that client is i will go through this process i just did here i will start looking at the the pre-migration activities that were, we were supposed to do all it in the website making sure that redirects are in place making sure that all the redirects are landing in the right locations, making sure that you're not redirecting everything to the home page because that's that's a problem as well. You need to redirect the content to new pages that have similar content. If not, Google will ignore them. Uh, and then it will go through all of the activities, uh, auditing the new website, uh, trying to see the, the metrics of the, old web, of the old website. And that's something that we could see in Google Analytics, see how it was doing before, which pages were doing better or worse, and compare that to the performance that I'm seeing right now, because sometimes I have seen clients that remove pages that were key to the to the business because there were sub sub subcategory pages, and they thought that they were not useful, but actually they were bringing out of traffic and revenue. So that's something I will keep an eye on as well. Fab, and we've got uh, one more question and then we'll wrap up. Um, we've, we've just gone slightly over, so thank you very much for staying with us for a little bit longer. Um, a couple more minutes. So, is there a limit to the number of redirects you would put in place with a migration or focus on those top pages and analytics and backlinks? That's a question from Nathan. No, I haven't. Uh, there's no limit. I have done migrations with thousands of redirects. If you think about it, if you have a huge website with a lot of pages, with uh, tens of thousands of pages, those need to be redirected to the new location. So you need to make sure that uh, those redirects are in place, even if there are a lot of pages. And I will always ask for the developer support to make sure uh, that they can implement that amount of redirects. Great. Brilliant. Well, um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. And we hope it's been useful and helpful. If your question hasn't been answered, like I said at the beginning, me, Marcos, Bruce, the whole team at Site Visibility are really happy to chat to you through um, any questions, any challenges you're facing. Um, if you take a moment to have a quick look in the chat box now, I've posted the link to the uh, migration white paper, which has a really helpful checklist in there, information on auditing and all of those things, and the link to Bruce's calendar where you can talk to us about your mi migration project and how we can help you. Um, but for now, for everyone at Site Visibility, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Marcos. Wonderful webinar, as usual, my hero. And thank you, Rachel, for being looking at the questions and for being a fabulous co-host. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. And uh, stay safe, everybody. Stay safe and healthy. Bye. Bye.